So we are starting webinar, a new Revit tool for column reinforcement. Uh, this is me, uh, Valens Balsaj. I'll be presenting uh, this new tool. I'm application engineer here in Agacad. We create solutions and based on the BIM practitioner's experience and sell software worldwide. We are Autodesk authorized developers and industry partners for Precast. So we'll talk about this Precast concrete tool uh, add-on, what we have, uh, and column reinforcement. So to do mostly on column reinforcement, we'll talk about it. And then, um, yeah, so you'll see a couple of examples how and what could be created. Then we'll use precast concrete to create elements, insert connections, create reinforcement, renumber, and create drawings. I will show simple configurations how to place reinforcement for the column and for core bills, then how to insert connections, uh, renumber, and create sharp drawings. So, full workflow for that as well. And this is it short introduction and then we can switch to Revit screen where I have my sample project and on the right side you see here tools for BIMDOC uh, here are uh, available all of our tools you can download this tools for BIMDOC from our web page and have a trial two weeks trial uh, of any of the tools or you can uh, yeah contact us if you want some more information all right so what we will use today it will be this one so column reinforcement very similar to the beam reinforcement and wall reinforcement which is already included in precast concrete and um, well from user interference it looks similar but it works of course different way so let's take a look so we, we will be working with standard Revit uh, columns so what I will do, I will go to column and then I will uh, just pick column family with uh, some selected section. And I'm just gonna, oops, uh, maybe I'm gonna make it from level one to level two. So I'm just gonna do it like this and I'm gonna delete this one. So I have this column now just like that and we will build the configuration of reinforcement for it. Uh, column reinforcement, it has rebar configurations for columns. Let me just open it. So it looks like this. Here I have already a couple of configurations. I will select this one and save it with a different name. This is second webinar today, so I'm just gonna give new name for it. And um, it's gonna work with rectangular columns, uh, the first release. And here you will have settings for the cover, uh, right, from different sides. Then we have settings for uh, main reinforcement, stirrups and corbels. So I will, I will create uh, this one, like new item, and in, in this, row you can define a rule how to place main reinforcement so i will say that i want to have main reinforcement on the front of the wall so it's uh, front is the same as it is in the family editor then i pick the size of reinforcement uh, reinforcement size depends on on your country and and whatever reinforcement type you have so it could be uh, like different type, you can call it strand if you want to, but basically that's, you select the type of rebar and then that the amount of rebars, which will be distributed in, in the first row on the front and this uh, horizontal rule, how to distribute that, it will be an, a vertical one. You can add some vertical distance from the, from the stirrup or from the cover of, column, then you have top and bottom offsets from the top and bottom of column. Side offsets as well, you could add uh, to, to the rebars like additional move 
the center and then anchorage from top so if you want to have some bars at the top of a column you can use this one so instead of using big bottom offset value you would okay how did i do that i dragged somehow five number from here to here and units now is metric but of course if you use imperial units it's going to work with imperial units and then couplers so uh, whatever couplers you have in your project you can use them uh, for the start or end of um, rebar and then i'm, I'm going to add another row i will say i want to have uh, rebars at the back of the column as you see in these pictures um, and then four fees in, in that direction. So I basically I define the size and the amount of elements, but uh, later on I, I switch to stirrups and then I say I want to create stirrups. The size of stirrups should be like this and then the shape of stirrups could be like that. And then stirrups, they should go around the front reinforcement from around one bar and, and the fourth in this case and it's gonna go from from front to the back of the column and and it will follow the cover settings and main rebars will be inside this stirrup so then i say this is this should be my yeah hooks and then uh layout rule so it could be like uh just one step between all the bars with some offset at the start or at the end um, or it could be like three steps so you can define uh, different values here right uh, or relative distance here how it should be divided and then one bar so it basically you can define uh, just a fixed number with spacing um, the bars from the start or from the end so we pick one of these rules and then you'll apply that for this one so it's just like continuing off from this row and um, so okay i have o shape maybe we can add another one and we will say that i want to have i shape uh, so it's just like you can see here in the picture it will be just vertical bar between which will go from front to back direction if you want to have horizontal stirrups you should use i shaped 90 uh shape form what do you have here right so okay so this one is like that i'm gonna tie it around the second bar and other things what we have is settings here so in the settings for so for main reinforcement you can define solid or unobscured and then uh, use partition uh, just for numbering purpose uh, you could use partitions so should be uh, working fine and core bells is um, you, you need to have some families just uh, they should be phase based families they should be hosted on a column and they should be rectangular or uh, with a sloped bottom edge then we have it in a project you can select it and and uh, assign it so but first of all let's let's try to create reinforcement simple bars for this column so what i will do i'll say i want to link uh, configuration to was to this wall type actually let's uh, let's um, duplicate this type i want to have it a little bit different let's make it like that let's go to column link yeah, yeah we have here all the types in the project all the column types in the project and i will say i want to use rectangular configuration and i want to use this configuration on this type of columns uh, i can have any number of columns in my project it's gonna apply uh, if they are the same type Right, I'm going to change this one a little bit. Uh, it will apply the same configuration. So when I click on create, it will read information in the column link and it will apply that configuration for my columns. So what I have here now is like four columns on the front, four columns at the back, and then I have this one as well uh, created here, right? Like this on the second bar, I've tied 
Um, and um, if, if you want to change something for a particular column, you can use modify tool. Modify tool uh, allows you to, I don't know, if, if you want to, you can change the start offset or if you want to, you can extend bars, let's say, by defined distance or something else. So for any column, you can you can make this kind of uh, individual changes, or you can um, you can modify configuration and update by modified configuration. So whenever you have some kind of changes, right, you can always uh, do the. Let's make this one as well. So you can always run update. So it will update by configuration, which was applied on this column, or you can update by column link. So this will apply by the latest configuration. So that's the one. So so now I don't have this individual modification here. And then you can just delete bars, right, with this tool, like delete, and that's it. So we don't uh, get any reinforcement here. And then if you want to have corbels, uh, in this sample project, I have different kind of corbels here. One of uh, is has some details. Another one is quite empty, just the shape of it. But basically, that's um, yeah. I can I can just drop it here. So if I will just do it like that, I will align it maybe with this edge and this one. This is the, the type of uh, corbel, what I want to, to create reinforcement for. So I need to find it. I know that that's structural connection family. And I will find it here. That's the one. I will add this type to this configuration. And for each type, I can define different configurations. So basically, I, I pick one of the rebars here. And then I say uh, just how it should be created. Right, so for example, I want to have this one, so I will say I want to have fifth bar. It should be, I don't know, maybe a little bit bigger. Then I define all the values here based on this picture. Then I add the number one. I say, okay, this shouldn't be the same bar. Maybe it should be this one. And, and, uh, and then I could use some front offset value. And I guess I can uh, use some left and right offsets. And then uh, this distance should be bigger. And then uh, let's add the number one. This is going to be the third one. I just pick the right bar, whichever I want to use. Maybe we should, these guys should be maybe a little bit smaller. And all right, so this one, uh, I'm gonna make it like from front. It could be actually the same, but here maybe it could be a bit bigger. And I want to have four of these, two of these, maybe um, left, right, top. This one, maybe also extended. Okay, so this one maybe should be much bigger. Top and back offsets. Actually, this one should be a little bit lower, probably like 42 or something. All right, so when I do something like this, I'm gonna save it and save and close, and we can try now to update by column link, so by the latest configuration. So we created, and I see only only lines. It's it's quite fine if I know what I do here, but uh, then I want to check visually how does it look. I would go to Corbels and then I will also say that I want to see that as a solid. So I'm gonna do that one more time. And I, and I have now these bars created here. Okay, so just like that. Yeah, rebar config, maybe one more time, we should actually go to this uh, Corbel. And what I want to do here is I want to have uh, bar number seven, and maybe it should be smaller, and then maybe I should have five or so. Uh, and I will use some values here, just like that, maybe. 
and I'm gonna save as uh, we can save and close actually and run the update again so we get these bars uh, created in the same way right to see here so now based on my settings here uh, so if I create um, I'll go to the section here and what I will do now I will just mirror what, this one and maybe I'm gonna make a copy here so uh, let's update reinforcement and you'll see that uh, what happens here is that if it's um, two corbels on the same uh, elevation so this top reinforcement now is actually straight bars um, like this one was bended right so um, it acts differently in, in a different situation. If we'll go to the section view here, uh, you will see that I have here uh, rectangular uh, corbels, right? So different kind of bars here, like vertical stirrups, horizontal stirrups, and other shape of horizontal stirrup. And then uh, the same goes with, uh, uh, with this type of corbel could be your family or you will be able to, to use sample project which I'm gonna load into the help page so you will find help page and sample project I hope I'll put it here on the Monday because I want to clear this one and then put it for you so you could use it if you want to all right so okay uh, that's uh, the way you could use reinforcement for precast and, and I'm going to show you now more examples for it. If you have uh, any questions just type in and I will try to answer them, okay? Here I have uh, just uh, again column, I have beams um, and these are joint like cast in place elements. It just depends how they are joined but if I will create reinforcement for these this one so I had configuration assigned already which extends the bars uh, to the top but over here you see it, it was just um, a different connection the beams and now they are inside the beam so it depends how do you join the elements then I have these guys uh, column with some tubes at the bottom but what I want to do is that I want to create reinforcement for this one, but just I will show you a couple of things. How does it work? So, so here this one is a little bit longer. Uh, in some countries, uh, that's the way they put reinforcement. So this one is a little bit longer. So that's why we have this setting. It will move one of the rebars here. So if I'll go to configuration, you will see I have this one, this option. So I picked which bar should be moved and then added the distance so now only one bar here moved up a little bit and then you will see another difference here is these stirrups they have different bending air uh, radius than these so i just use different uh, rebar type because you can have these bending uh, radius in, in um, properties of any rebar type that's the way I got these. So if we'll take a look to the six, uh, to the level one, you will see I have bars which uh, which is going around the reinforcement and bars which is going around these tubes. And um, if we'll take a look to configuration, the stirrups has special parameter which is called uh, offset. So it's just offsetting stirrup from the standard position into uh, outside the column so it, now that's that's where i got these results if we'll take a look to other examples i think we can run a couple of other columns so when i click on create it will create reinforcement for all of our columns because i have assigned different configurations for for the columns so um this one it has quite easy, simple reinforcement, I guess, just at the sides and stirrups. This one, it has a sloped, you see, corbel, and I have rectangular corbel, but that just depends how, how do I put the 
configurations, right? So what I have in this configuration, for example, I have many corbels you see here. So I have different kind of corbels. If they are assigned to that column, they will be reinforced like that. So that's the way you can have your database, I guess, and then use it. All right, so these are quite similar, actually, with just uh, some additional elements added into the Corbel families. This one, yeah, it has just additional dense reinforcement here. If this one has cutouts, so you'll see that these rebars are shorter than these automatically. Then if I'm gonna look at this one, Okay, this one has just rectangle corbel corbels, but uh, maybe this one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, uh, just to show you one additional option here. So I have these bars. So uh, they are placed at the top. Uh, I mean, like with using this one, anchorage distance. So I have like uh, anchorage distance and then top offset is it starts to work like a distance from the top face, from the placement face to the top direction. So I got this one as well in this kind of way. Now, if I have columns in this kind of shapes, how did I do that? Is that I added some face-based cutouts here uh, for all of these columns. So let me show you what will happen if I'm gonna create reinforcement for these. What happens at the cut is that the tool is cutting main reinforcement. Just made a cut here. I had these guys actually at the center here, but they are cut as well. But here at the cut, uh, the stirrup will automatically change the size because because it it just goes from the from here to the to the nearest side to the nearest face. So that's uh, automatically, it was reduced. Now, if we'll take a look to this section, it will act a little bit different way because now I have like L shape and we called this part as a protrusion in configuration. So if we'll take a look to configuration, you will see that here I, I placed the rebar sent at the front, but additionally, I said that if there will be protrusion, uh, use these values, like this type of rebar and two of these. So it's gonna be just placed at the protrusion position, hard to say, over here. So you see, now I have three of these bars instead of uh, four, like it was in uh, regular configuration. But for this one, I also made some additional reinforce. Um, oh, and, and uh, additionally, this one, O-shape reinforcement was reduced to fit the size of this protrusion, how we call it, like a narrow part. And then I also added some bar at the back of the column, so it looks quite nice here. And then this kind of situation when it's a partial cut out. So it happens so that it, it's gonna place this these bars uh, like in, in the narrow part, and then it will, deliver these rebars, which were standard ones. So I have you now two shapes of reinforcement here. So yeah, I guess that's that's the way it's going to work. Well, for this kind of different kind of cutouts. Now, let me show you other examples, what I have here. So what we've been trying to solve with the first first release. So this one is very similar, except that I made a cut here and I placed a corbel. So now it's like for crane beams or something. We have a lot of space here. So anyway, it will find a, find that corbel and it's gonna place reinforcement, right? And this one maybe is, uh, well, actually the difference here is that this corbel, it, it has this angle inside. So I placed angle in this corbel and I got these these bars. So like they are welded to the, so I'm just, you actually adjusted the, the values, right? How it should be created and that's it. So it's pretty simple. Here I have some big bottom offset to fit my reinforcement. I don't know what else. And then this one is very big column. So I'm just gonna run 
this one and you will see that I have a lot of reinforcement here. Here I have just O-shape, pretty dense O-shape rebars and here I have I-shape which has different hooks at the ends and in one direction and in another direction and I have I don't know how many rows of rebars here, like six probably, because this one is quite big. So at least that similar stuff what I saw in our clients. So I hope it's gonna be useful, uh, especially corbels, which is quite a pain uh, to model. And of course, all the cutouts and so on. So it, um, it should help uh, some time for those who has m columns in the in the Revit model. So basically, yeah, that's that's the tool. That's how you can get started with it. And then what I will do next, I will go to Precast Concrete here in our tools for BIMDoc, and I'm gonna use a couple of other tools just to show you how you can use it with columns. So I will use, first of all, Smart Connections. If I will open configuration window for Smart Connections. The tool allows you to place connections like corbelas and, and lifters and plates and grout tubes. Oops, what is it loading? loading families for me. It has possibility to add template project from which it will load the families needed for configurations. I just forgot to, to change that one. So it's now loading me families, which I actually didn't want to use today, but let him do the job until he will be happy. I'm just gonna, so here you have the configuration window where you can define how to place line-based families and how to place point-based families on your elements. You can just distribute them in one direction, like in this image, right? Uh, in vertical direction and horizontal direction, how to place selected family, which you select from, the, from your family browser, whatever you have in your project, so you can pick any family, uh, face-based or line-based family, and define rules how it should be placed. And it could be used with many structures, steel, uh, wood, or concrete. So we use this technology very, yeah, a lot in with, with, with different tools. Let me just uh, check what's my template project. Actually, I don't want to have it and I'm gonna change the place for configuration because I was just about to use uh, which one I guess I was using this one all right let's take a look configuration now do I have these oh yeah so I think I got my configurations back all right, let me just select a couple of elements here and um, I'm gonna insert different kind of configurations into these elements because, yeah, I was, I, I already assigned what configuration should be used for which element. So I have this auto insert tool now and it's just placed a couple of lifters based on gravity point of a, of a beam, then some cutouts, then some cutouts at the ends, and then pretty simple stuff for the beams this time. And, but um, so when I was placing our corbels for the columns previously, so I, I made this with Revit, I aligned it and so on. And uh, I want to show you what it would be if we would use Mark Connections. So it's pretty easy to uh, apply this tool and you will see I had these at the bottom. So it could be plate, it could be for uh, column shoes, it could be for grout tubes. Depends on the country, as you see from all the examples what I get, somebody is using these, somebody is using these, somebody is using these, I don't know, a lot of different kind of stuff, but that's just a family which you can create and you can insert. Then I have placed this one on the front face of my column, so I would always know where is the front 
view of my column orientation of my columns in the model. So that's quite important when you create drawings and you want to define the surface of the mold. And then, okay, and what happened now that I got these corbels here automatically to the directions of the beams. If I'm gonna select the other uh, columns and click on okay, you will see that they will get different corbels. So why did I get that? Is just because I, I have settings. So you see this one is pointing out to three directions and just at the bottom of the beams. What the ha why did this happen is that I have this setting. This additional possibility in smart connections is that you can search for different joints for column and, and beam joints in this case. When you work with walls, you have other options. When you work with beams, you have other options. And you can search for different connections with other elements. So in this case, if I will find connection with a beam, I will place this corbel at the bottom, actually at the bottom of the beam with a little bit offset. So just for the, uh, we use neoprene or something else, bearing, some kind of bearing on, on the top of it. So I left some gap here, as you see uh, below the beam. I did it in this way. Yeah, a couple of other elements here. Uh, so what I want to do next is that I want to have, yeah, actually reinforcement. So let's uh, let's use this tool. I already assigned actually configuration here for these columns. So I'm just gonna run and, and create reinforcement for these. So it should do it. Yeah, so now rebars are placed. The next step, what I want to show you from precast concrete is that, for example, I'm gonna uh, select all of these columns, structural columns, okay. And I'm gonna assign mark to these columns. So now if you'll see to plan all of them, they have same mark, but now I will use another tool which is called sort mark. Uh, which is included in precast concrete. And then I will say that I want to renumber elements, element numbering. Let's use this one. And I will choose mark parameter. So I want to put information, numbering information into this parameter. Here I have grouping, filtering, numbering options, different kind of stuff, which I can save and, and later use in other projects as well. But here, um, important thing is numbering, where I set parameters, which will have influence on the number of column. So if a volume is different, I will get different number. If I have different level, if I have different length, uh, so I will get different number of column. So I can pick actually from any instance or type parameters here, and, and it will give different number. Then how to number them in, in one direction and another direction I can use level if I want to also sort them by uh, level and start numbering in the first floor first, then in second floor and so on. Uh, but that's my rules. I, I, I will add only, only mark. I will start numbering from one. I will add this kind of prefix. I can add actually any information. This tool could be used in, in different ways. For example, I can write coordinates for, I don't know, for the, or top elevations for the piles, for the columns probably. I'm just gonna skip these. I don't want to have, I just want to have prefix and start number, okay? And I save these configurations and lay, use them later. But what happens is that it's gonna renumber my selected elements. And I got them here like one, two, two, then it's, it's gonna, Go here. Uh, these are the same based on my criteria, which I selected. And then this one, of course, it has already slight modifications. So now it's uh, it's giving it uh, additional number. Mark value. Why do I need mark values? Is because when I will create assemblies now, tool uh, will will try to name them based on the mark. So the assembly name will probably be like this. 
depends if if I have this kind of already in my project. But what will happen now is that I will go to Smart Assemblies tool, which I have here, and it has also configurations. In these configurations, I have defined. You see these views, checked uh, marks over here, check boxes over here. So you see that I selected to have so many views for one column and, and direction of the views should be like this. And I was rotating these views uh, because I want to have them horizontal on my sheet. And I have applied different view temp types just to filter out uh, rebar and, and form work uh, cuts. And then I have, have applied view templates, different kind of view templates for each view, and then different kind of dimension rules, how to dimension elements in each view. Uh, dimension rules looks like this, where you can define how to dimension cutouts, how to dimension hosted details. I have actually here a lot of settings, how to dimension them, uh, how to filter them, uh, what should be, how they should be grouped, where should I snap with my dimension lines so I can snap to the edges of a solid element or I can snap to location point or I can snap to model lines. And here I just pick any category what I have in my view and then I define rules how they should be dimensioned. So that's what I use here. Uh, reinforcement dimensioning and then some notes how it should be and then where it should be placed i have all these settings already also uh, schedules created so i use schedule view templates to create hosted details and reinforcement schedules in this case and just two sheets with the selected title blocks so that's what i have in my configurations and what I will do now I'm gonna select this one and say create create assemblies so this is smart assemblies tool when I click on create it's gonna create assembly with all hosted elements already added to the column assembly so I don't need to pick the families because they are hosted on my column so they are automatically added. Reinforcements also is automatically added to the uh, assembly and it's gonna create views. It will calculate the assembly mass and it will place dimensions for me. So now we'll see that I have assembly mass, I have some information when it was created. And then I'm gonna move down to the project browser and we'll find this column here at assemblies. So now I have like a section where I have dimensions of, um, in this case, I'm, I was measuring just the balls and then I was measuring position of these balls and as well as um, other stuff. But actually then the first thing is created. So when the software is creating this, it's using Revit functionality to place the views, the standard Revit views. And standard Revit views, this is the top elevation. And these are sections. Section is always like in the center of a column or just uh, in the center of assembly. So, but uh, that's not how I want this to be. So I'm gonna pick this one and I will move it here. And then I'll select all of these. And then what I will do, I'll say, I want to crop views actually. And I want to just reduce the depth of uh, visibility. I'm gonna, actually do it like that and just adjust these so what i uh, i do that because um i want uh, to create other assemblies and that for next assembly for next column drawing these views will be in these positions and they will have this reduced depth already so i want to make sure that uh, for next assembly, I don't need to drag this stuff. So, uh, okay, so this is the left view. Then I will go to the front bar. And here I have similar situation. So I'm gonna just reduce this one a little bit like that. And I have some, and, I, and this one, yeah, let's do this one as well. 
And I don't want to see all the reinforcement, maybe, yeah? I just want to see something like that. Or I don't know, I can I can make this one even just like this or something. All right, so then I go to the sheet and then I will place the front view here. And then I'll place the left view here. So you see it's uh, aligning them. So I'm just gonna uh, make no title here. And then I will place detail views. So one here, another one here, and another one here. And then actually I'm gonna change the titles to these and I'm gonna move these a little bit closer. Then I will have, what else? We have schedule over here. So I'm just gonna drop it here at the bottom where I know in the United States we place it here, but well, it depends again on your standards. So that's why you can build uh, different kind of standards here. So I'm gonna move here and then I will say I want to. So what I'm doing here is that I'm building sheet template. Uh, so for next assemblies, which I will create, uh, it will use this this layout of the views on the sheets automatically and I don't need to drag them. So that's my goal. So that's what I will do now. I'm just gonna still adjust this a little bit and then I'm gonna add rebar schedule. So I have it here. And I'm gonna move these guys a little bit. Okay, let's say this is the layouts of my both sheets. Okay, I don't need this one anymore. I'm gonna go to configuration of smart assemblies. I will go back to that configuration, which I have used first. And then I will say this sheet should be as a sheet template, this one as well. And then I'm saving this for next assembly. I think I can now create assembly of this one. If I work with the software, I started building up configurations and I finished this first project and then I go to the second project. So I have, I can set that first project to be my template project. The, in the new project, I will use the same settings. I will use the same sheet layout. And so, so I can, again, save time even further, right? Okay, so this is good. Okay, so this is the PC4. We should find it here now. And now we can go straight to the sheet. So actually, because these views are rotated, so I need to adjust them slightly because they might lose the position. Other than that, I have dimensions here for the corbel where I said that I want to dimension left and right of a corbel. So that's what I get here. And here I said that I want to measure to the center point of the family and to the center point of another family. And I have total measure as well, right? One more thing what happened and programmers said that they cannot do that. So unfortunately, but I'm gonna drag these so this would be a little bit uh, more nice and, and then I have this one as well here created and placed on the sheet the same goes with this one except that it doesn't look really nice here uh, we, as, again the, the views they, they jumped off a little bit from the position because of rotation of the views but that's not really a big deal we could adjust a little bit and then so what we get from the clients we save like from I don't know from 50% probably to the 90% uh, of the time while creating assemblies in Revit depends on how complex your elements is you will uh, what are requirements of your manufacturers and so on sometimes you will need to add some nodes some lines uh, and so and, and adjust the views or add something additionally, but uh, again, it depends greatly on the elements and requirements. But anyway, it saves a lot of time. It already takes everything into one assembly. You don't need to 
be careful about selecting these all of these elements so it really saves a lot of time all right so this is smart assemblies and i think that's what i wanted to show you about the column column reinforcement and how to work with revit and our precast concrete tool for columns if you are interested with walls beams or whatever um, other topics uh, we make a webinar so we can make online meetings and talk about it uh, one more time i'm just gonna mention about these tools for women doc if you still don't have it you can download it from our web page and then you can pick any version actually the last three versions will be available this one is a little bit outdated uh, we have 21 version as well thank you for your attention and yeah bye bye AGA CAD, building BIM together.